All right, I'll just uh, sort this out. Hi there, everyone. How's it going? Great to see you uh, all here. Uh, my name's Murray Woodman, and uh, the talk today is Better Tools for Content Creators, Paragraphs, Parallax, Scroller, and Friends. Uh, first off, I'd like to say it's a, a great privilege to be able to speak to you uh, today at, at DrupalCon, and uh, thanks for coming along. I know there's a lot of... Sorry? The mic? The mic? Okay. Can the people up the back here? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Welcome, everyone, to uh, Better Tools for Content Creators. Okay. So what are we going to see today? Well, first off, um, we're going to have a very quick look at the Paragraphs module, and then we're going to go through a bunch of Contrib modules um, that I've been working on uh, with my team. And we're basically going to see a, a suite of tools that augment um, the Paragraphs module, which allows you to do some cool things, including uh, you know, doing sort of uh, effects such as Parallax, Scroller, and a number of other sort of uh, JavaScript libraries and uh, things like that. Uh, I must say that um, the work I'm going to show you today is not just my effort. It's the result uh, of a lot of hard work um, put together by the, the team of people I work with as well. So that includes Ivan, Chloe, Dalibor, Radium, and Peter. Um, the eight sort of con contrib modules we're going to see uh, is a result of uh, a lot of their hard work and inspiration as well. Um, but as you can see, we've put a lot of effort into this. We, we caught the paragraphs bug probably about six months ago or, or maybe a little bit more. And uh, as we started using it, we started liking it more and more and basically you know, decided to um, put a number of sort of resources into it, yeah, just to see how far we could actually take the model. Uh, as we go through the presentation today, we're going to have uh, a look at a, uh, a demonstration site um, that we've built. So we built this site um, basically to show off the contrib modules that we've done, but also to, you know, obviously to show you guys what's possible uh, with paragraphs. So I'll just jump across to that now. So this is the, 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 uh, the demo site that we'll be having a look at, and uh, I encourage you all just to, to take a look at it um, in your own sort of free time. Just uh, having a quick look at the homepage here, we can see that um, what we have here is sort of like a chunked out design where you can see you, know, you have these different sections that uh, are on the homepage, and each one of these uh, has been implemented as a paragraph. So yeah, basically the suite of tools we've done sort of allows you to put together these kinds of designs. Possibly the, the best way to, to give you sort of an immediate understanding of how paragraphs work is just to jump into the, uh, the edit screen here and we can just have a little look at, uh, at what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, we can see the, you know, the, the trusty old sort of body field there. Um, but then coming down, we can see we have um, some other fields for various uh, paragraph types. So for example, um, here we have uh, you know, a, a paragraph here called a content paragraph type. That's a, a paragraph bundle. And we have uh, a number of different fields um, where you can configure the actual uh, sort of content or yeah, data that is going into that individual bundle. Um, on this particular site, we've implemented a number of different bundles. Um, I'll just come down here so you can see um, the different bundles that we've uh, got going here. So, you know, we have our carousels, a content paragraph, galleries, content lists, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, one of the, the sort of benefits of the paragraph module is it's very easy for editors just to come along and, uh, you know, click that they, you know, want to create uh, a paragraph and then, you know, that paragraph will open up and then they can edit the details uh, in that paragraph and then save that out. So I won't go into that in too much more detail, but you know, we'll be seeing lots more sort of demos of, of how um, the paragraphs module uh, actually works. Okay. So um, I actually haven't had anything to do with the actual creation of the, the paragraphs module, um, but all the other sort of modules we'll see after this point is, is stuff that we've been working on. How, how, is, how can we best describe what the Paragraphs module is? I think, you know, possibly the, the name of it is a little bit um, misleading. Um, basically, 
you might want to think of it as like chunks of um, information or um, possibly widgets or wh whatever other phrase you want to uh, come along come up with. But basically, uh, it allows content creators to place widgets of varying kinds onto the page, and they are able to decide the order in which they want those widgets to appear. And the really good thing is that it actually all occurs in the node edit form. There's no need for them to sort of jump out into um, sort of some panels kind of configuration screen. It all happens on the node edit form. And this is one of the main advantages because it gives editors, you know, a single interface um, through which they can add their own content. Okay. I'm about to take you guys through a number of scenarios, a number of conversations that we've had with clients along the way and, you know, going through some of the requests that they have had for us to deliver features for them. Um, these three designs you see on the screen here are pretty typical of, you know, the designs you see on the web these days. You have uh, designs that go edge to edge. Um, you have really sort of luscious, rich-looking graphics in the background, and those graphics also go edge to edge. And, of course, you know, you have all this stuff that's actually been entered by content creators. It's not some thema um, sort of working in the, the background, sort of targeting different elements with CSS. This is stuff that um, content creators have to do. Um, so you can probably see that, you know, the typical sort of Drupal website that may come to your mind is, is something where, the, you know, you have this sort of content region sort of stuck in the middle of the page in its own container with sort of blank space on the side and, you know, there's no ability to, for editors to control what's going on the side. It's all sort of stuck in the middle. So these kinds of designs really do sort of throw up a challenge for, you know, sort of typical patterns you might see on a Drupal website. Okay, so the first question uh, we were asked, um, you know, by a, a client was how can they control the ordering and positioning of widgets? I mean, as, as we know, when we're, as site builders, when we're building out a site, we will generally use something such as context or panels to place, you know, blocks or other widgets on the page. This is a decision that the site builder is actually making, or the information architect. They know what they want to achieve, they lay it out, and then they capture it in features, and then it's locked away. It's not really possible for, you know, content creators to come in and easily, uh, you know, move things around. Sure, you have the, the block system, which they could probably play with. As, as well, you know, you do have sort of, you know, panelizer and in-place editing interfaces, but nothing that's really uh, happening on the, uh, the node edit form. So Paragraphs offers a way sort of out of this uh, sort of scenario. So we'll just have a, a quick look here at the demo site. So I'm calling this a normal page, what we're looking at here. Um, we have the sort of a, a body field, but we also have a few paragraphs on this page. So down the bottom here in gray, it's like I'm a classy content paragraph. That's just a simple paragraph we've put on the page. We've also got a few different paragraphs over here on the, uh, on the right hand side. So if we just go and have a look at the, uh, the edit screen here, and we'll just have a look at how the, these paragraphs have been implemented. They're pretty simple. Um, it's pretty simple paragraphs. W what I've actually done with these paragraphs is sort of grouped out the fields. It kind of keeps things a little bit sort of simpler um, for the user interface and, uh, and keeps things compact. But we can see that we have, you know, a number of different um, sort of paragraphs here and, you know, the editor can, can just sort of click and move them around and change the order as they like. So that's, that's quite a handy thing for uh, yeah, editors to be able to control the positioning of things. And so often, editors do want to just you know, place things on a page and, and have them appear as they desire. Okay, so um, another thing uh, the editors that uh, a client was asking was these, how do we do these edge-to-edge -edge designs? They, they wanted to be able to control the layout from you know, the full left-hand side of the screen all the way across the right-hand side. They didn't want their content to be you know, stuck uh, in the middle. So uh, we, we solved this problem by uh, sort of working on a, a module that we've called uh, Edgy. And uh, Edgy allows you to um, basically have different layouts that 
work in harmony when you drop uh, a paragraph in. So we've just seen a, a normal design with uh, like left and right columns. Here we have what we, we call an edge-to-edge -edge design or an edgy design. It's probably a little bit hard to see, unfortunately, on uh, the screen here, but that, that grey box you see at the bottom is an edge-to-edge -edge design. So what we have is we have a, a panelizer layout here um, with where the design has been say, says this is edgy. We could have another sort of panels layout where the content is in the middle. And the beauty of this sort of edgy module that we've built is that that context is understood by the paragraph and the paragraph then sort of gets its own container and uh, sort of understands um, sort of what context it's in. So that makes it possible just to drop paragraphs in, in on different kinds of layouts and you, the site builder or themer, you don't have to worry about it. It's, it's all been um, sort of handled for you. So yeah, there we go. The, uh, the contrib module edgy there just basically allows paragraphs to, to handle their, their own container and basically center themselves on the page if it's an edge-to-edge -edge design. Uh, there's a few sort of dependencies in here. You've got to sort of juggle a few things to get this working. But basically, if you have a look at the, the, uh, the edgy module, you'll see that there's uh, a panels layout called edgy Boxton, um, a CTL style plugin, as well as some tweaks in uh, hook preprocess page and some stuff in page uh, temp tipple fip. If you get all that stuff sorted, um, basically all these edgy designs that we're going to be seeing now are just going to work um, naturally for you. Okay, so th the next question is, you know, how can I change the background colors? It was it was fine for the uh, the editors to be able to drop the paragraphs in, but they also then wanted to start controlling. The, the backgrounds on these uh, various um, paragraphs that they were dropping in. So, you know, as every good uh, sort of site builder would naturally conclude, that's probably time to, to drop a, a class onto, um, onto the, uh, the paragraph. And this functionality didn't exist in the, the paragraphs module out of the box. So we've just, um, you know, put, basically put a simple sort of class um, that can wrap onto the, uh, the div. So here we see um, a couple of edgy paragraphs with um, sort of classes. So the blue one is a, a primary lighter class, and the uh, the uh, the second paragraph there is um, is a secondary lighter class. So just having a a little look, see how we've implemented that. So we come down, we have a look at the paragraph. In this particular case, um, this stuff is sort of all in the the settings. Thing, but we can see we've we've done a, a form alter here, and we've uh, just um, basically got a, a number of classes that we can drop on. So yeah, this is a pretty simple functionality, but kind of pretty crucial, and it does allow you to do you know a whole lot of uh, you know special things. Okay, so if you want to check that one out, that's the classy paragraphs um, module that will allow you to um, put classes onto your paragraphs. Uh, how does that work? It's, um, it's done with a, a hook where you basically define a list of options. Uh, it's, it's a pretty um, common Drupal uh, pattern. Uh, so at the moment, this module is just doing it through code, although we are currently looking at providing a UI and allowing you to put different classes on, on different um, paragraph types. I think that will make it a, a lot more um, handy, but uh, yeah, this is certainly enough to, to get you started now. Okay, how can I get kick-started? One of the beauties of paragraphs is that they are pluggable entities, right? It's a pluggable sort of system that we have. Once you define that field um, on, an, on a content type and you, you're pulling in those paragraphs, you can put any kind of uh, paragraph type you like in there. And this makes it very, very easy just to, you know, implement new functionality and to expose that to your users. So as a way to demonstrate this, we've just released a, a, a sort of little group of modules called Paragraphs Pack that basically, you know, shows off a few of the, uh, the things that you can do with paragraphs really easily out of the box. And, you know, as Drupal site builders, this stuff is, is fairly trivial. It's, it's basically, you know, creating a paragraph type and, um, you know, just basically defining the default uh, sort of view mode for it and, and rendering um, that out. But, but nonetheless, this is, a, you know, a great way just to, to show off um, the kinds of things 
that you uh, can do. Just hang on a tick. Okay, so here's paragraphs pack. So this is a very, very simple paragraph, this one. It's the, the content paragraph. Um, we've kind of tricked this out and kind of put a few grids into the, the CK editor just to sort of make it a bit more um, sort of sort of have a bit more utility for the, uh, the editors. But yeah, that's a very simple content paragraph. Here's another very simple content paragraph using the grids with uh, some video. Uh, this is an interesting one, a content list. Um, so often when, when dealing with clients, they will say, hey, I just want to put a list of things on the page. You know, there's no necessarily sort of strong data model that's attached to this stuff. It's not really a, a see also or, or a, you know, a more info or a related kind of semantic link. It's just like I just want to put a few items on the page and have them look good. And this is a perfect use case for something such as the content list. And here we have the situation where uh, an editor can just go in and pick out a few different um, sort of entities, in this case nodes, with an entity reference and put them on the page. Um, the actual paragraph itself allows the editor to pick the view mode and that will just render out. So, so long as you have the, uh, the view modes done for each one of your content types, um, you know, you're going to be right. All the editor has to do is just bang, 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 pick the nodes that they want and they're going to display in a really beautiful way. And, uh, you know, once you have this basic pattern down, you can really open up a lot of sort of, uh, sort of opportunities for editors. Um, yeah, the juice box gallery. This is, uh, this is a, a really nice gallery that works sort of out of the box. It's fairly sort of design agnostic. It works in, in most themes. So we just thought we'd, um, we'd uh, sort of put that one in there just to show you, uh, you know, what you can do with it. Okay, so that's, um, that's basically the um, paragraphs pack. And uh, you can check that out there at the, the paragraphs pack um, sort of project. Just grab a drink. So much talking. Hey, us, us developers don't usually talk this much, right? <laughs> okay. So, when, we've, when we were building out Paragraphs Pack, we really wanted to be uh, developer friendly. So we haven't implemented any of this stuff as, uh, as features. So basically, when you turn these modules on, the fields are created programmatically and uh, the paragraph bundle is, is just there for you to use and you're free to go in and, you know, edit up the, you know, change the config as you like and, and capture that in features. So we really wanted uh, to make that as easy as possible for you. Okay, this is a cool one, right? The, the rest of this stuff to this point has been, it's been nice, but uh, maybe not amazing. But this is one aspect that I'm pretty stoked about. Um, how can I filter and display items? We all know views. Views, I don't think any of us would argue against, is, uh, is probably one of the reasons for Drupal being so successful. It you know, opens up the power of um, you know, doing SQL queries for um, um, site builders. But that power is not really available to content creators or to editors. Uh, you know, if an editor wants to get sort of uh, hold of that power, Maybe they could use, um, you know, one of those uh, sort of views um, panes that sort of exposes um, the view where they can, you know, maybe type in a node ID or something like that to, to filter it. But apart from that, it's pretty difficult to expose the power of views um, to editors. So let's think about that for a while. How can we solve that problem with paragraphs? Well, we've seen that paragraphs are fieldable and that they can collect information. Why don't we take that paragraph and that information that we've collected and tie that into a view and then allow editors to basically define what content they're going to pull back. It's pretty powerful, this, as an idea. So uh, I'll just, uh, just show you a, a quick demo for the cryptically named views filter object. Okay, so here we have our demo site again and we've got three nodes. So these are three recent demo nodes with a tile display. 
And uh, please excuse me for the thank you there. It just doesn't have an image. But what, what we're seeing here, this is the output of a view. And this view is a, has been filtered by three. We want three items coming back. We want to have demo nodes. That's a content type. And we want to use a special display on that view called the tile display. And we have those three results coming back. And this has been done with what I've called a filter paragraph. But you're free to make any old um, sort of paragraph you like, so long as you can sort of define the bridge between it and views. This next paragraph we see is uh, six recent landing pages with stack display. So we've just got another view mode called stack, uh, a view with a display called stack display. And this time we're, we want six items back um, for landing pages. What we are seeing here is the exact same paragraph using the exact same view, but just collecting different information um, from the editor. So uh, we just uh, go edit, and we'll just have a little look. It's not really too spectacular, the edit form here, but um, we can have a look. So this is the node filter. This is the first one. Um, and we can just see here, very simple, you know, the editor comes in, they select their, the demo, the type of, of node they want. They select the count and they, display the, they you know, select the display. Um, behind the scenes, there's, of course, an array that is basically mapping uh, this paragraph into the view. Um, and as a site builder, if you define that, you will enable sort of this stuff just to work magically for editors. We've, we've implemented this kind of thing for two clients, um, a media company that uses it ex really heavily and, uh, and another sort of content site where they want, editors wanted the ability to, to get different result sets back and they absolutely love it. And, uh, you know, this is, I think, a really a massively powerful thing that you can do um, with paragraphs. So, you know, one of the clients we've been uh, talking to, they've got all these crazy designs. They've got a, a solar index, search API, uh, and the view. And the, the information we collect, we can collect, uh, you know, queries, tags, categories, um, you know, different sort of layouts and all that stuff. Collect all that, get this amazing result set back, put it on the page, boom. So imagine, you know, a content editor writing an article on, oh, here is an article on uh, category X and tag Y. They write their article, and here's, a, you know, the la latest 10 items for that, you know. So it's a way for editors to really augment the content that they're uh, putting on the page. Uh -huh. so, so, yes, the views filter object is still a, a sandbox. I've still got to get that up as a contrib. It probably needs a little bit more documentation, but basically the, the code's there and, and ready to go. Okay, finally we get to the, uh, the title of the talk, right? Can it do parallax or custom backgrounds? Um, it didn't take us very long to realize that once we had this edgy stuff all sorted out, that we could start doing some really cool things with that. Um, it's not just putting classes on and, you know, maybe doing changing the color by class, but actually we could get um, do parallax effects. We could do different image backgrounds. We could choose custom colors. We could even put video behind it, right? So there's a lot of stuff that you can do once you sort of have got these edgy um, sort of paragraphs working. So um, I'll just yeah sh show you. Oh, man. I just always got to control click, control click. Okay. All right. So the entity background module, this is the, the one that does the magic here. So I'm just going to scroll through here and we can just sort of see a little bit of uh, parallax action. So here we have uh, in a, a paragraph. This is just an ordinary old content paragraph and we've put uh, an image on the background, a parallax image. It's a little bit subtle but you can see that bicycle is, is moving at a different speed. Um, we've got another background um, that we've implemented, just color. I know that's fairly run-of-the-mill but uh, it's very handy in some circumstances. And we've also got uh, an image background happening there as well. So basically, we've come up with a pluggable system to put different backgrounds onto paragraphs. 
We'll have a look at the interface. Um, this has been implemented by sort of CTools plugins, and the the uh, the config is actually stored on a on a field collection. So there's a little bit of um, magic going on uh, in the background here. Just have a look at the settings, um, and you can see here we've got the, this background section, and um, we've decided to use a parallax background here. Um, we could have used image or color. So it's just a, a media field. We've uploaded the image, and that's basically the way that one works. Um, as you can probably guess with, uh, with the background image, it's a very similar case. We've got an, an image, and we've uploaded the image with a media field. And uh, where did that color one go? There's the color one. Yeah, similar thing with color. So, I mean, this is a pluggable system. If you can invent different uh, sort of backgrounds that you want to implement, uh, go go ahead. So, oh man, that's what I didn't want to happen. Okay, what happened to that control click? Eh, sorry about this, guys. So yeah, when we were implementing this. Um, this, we didn't want to actually go away and um, sort of build a parallax sort of paragraph. We did want to do it in a, uh, in a pluggable way. And that's the beauty of this entity background is that you can put any one of these backgrounds on any paragraph that you've defined. So it is a very flexible way to, to basically augment the, a standard paragraph. How does it work? Well, I just said it was a, a CTools plugin. Um, basically, yeah, you just sort of define your plugin. And that plugin receives a selector, which is a CSS selector, and um, the field collection. And as I said before, the field collection is actually containing that background configuration. Um, in order to get this selector working, we had to, we've got another little module called, oh, I think it's like Paragraphs ID or something like that, which injects um, you know, a class onto the paragraph just so we can target that in uh, the CSS. So basically, these uh, CTOOL plugins, all they really know about is the selector and the configuration. They're not writing any content back onto the page. They're really just setting JavaScript and, and CSS and targeting in on uh, that selector. OK, next question. Can I alter the behavior of paragraphs? Now, to be fair, no client ever really said that. It was said between me and Ivan and I uh, standing, standing around uh, the whiteboard uh, sort of shooting the breeze on this kind of stuff. But yeah, basically we realize, okay, we've got the paragraphs now, let's do some, you know, some, you know, interesting things and, and get these paragraphs to, to do some stuff. So basically we just sort of took a cruise around the web and tried to find some cool JavaScript libraries to, uh, you know, to do some interesting things. So here we have entity behaviors and this is where like the, uh, the scroller stuff comes in. So before I start scrolling on this page, I'll just say the scroller module is a JavaScript library that takes um, the position, the scroll position of a page, and basically sort of maps that into you know attributes um, that are applied to elements, and then then sort of various effects take place according to the scroll position of the page. So here we are just scrolling down the page. We have a, a few paragraphs here. You can see we're just doing a few simple effects, um, doing changing the colors, making the images appear, mucking around with sort of alpha channels. Um, if I just go slowly on this one, you can see you get a nice little effect there with an image fading in over the other. There, there is a little bit of sort of sort of uh, trickery, not trickery, but you know, there's a few things you've got to do to get this to work. But basically, what we're doing here is is opening up. Um, you know, a lot of possibility for editors to be able to, to tell their story uh, in a simple way. Um, we've got another behavior here, height. Uh, that's pretty boring. But um, basically, yeah, you can set the height to uh, for, for different paragraphs for presentational uh, means. So, yeah, there's a lot of power that's, that's um, sort of opened up here. We can have a look at the, uh, the edit interface for this. It's very similar to the, the background one that we've we've already seen. So we'll come down. 
So let's go into the settings for this one. This is pretty hardcore, right? You'd have to you'd have to really know what you're doing um, if if you're using the scroller thing. But basically, you're setting different sort of data attributes um, on the on the uh, the paragraph div there, and um, yeah, then those sort of transitions are taking place according to the scroll position. So there's probably a whole stack of other stuff you can do with these uh, entity behaviors as well. It's really up to your uh, imagination and and really what the client uh, wants. Uh, yeah, so there's a project for that one as well, the Entity Behaviors module, and um, it works in a very similar way, a CTools plugin that takes a selector and the, uh, the field collection as well to, uh, to configure it. Okay, how can I provide navigation between paragraphs? Once, once we're in this sort of, uh, this world of, you know, having these edgy paragraphs and, um, you kind of start thinking, well, this is a pretty good model for doing single page websites, you know, like we could possibly, you know, open up a whole sort of world of possibilities here where, you know, editors, content creators can just come along and add uh, paragraphs as they like. How are we going to handle the, uh, the navigation for these guys? Um, so, you know, we decided just to make a simple little module that will uh, basically create a block for the, um, for each, each paragraph item that's on the page and you know this kind of replicates a little bit the you know the uh, the normal sort of menu or uh, menu block kind of thing that you would typically do this is basically the way you could do it with paragraphs uh, this page doesn't actually have a, a menu on it but I'll just show you um, this particular demo page here this is very subtle, this, this one here, but you can see over on the right hand side, we've got, um, you know, uh, sort of the, the menu there. So this is a very simple sort of list element. Um, the design for this is basically ripped off the Apple website. We just wanted to sort of, uh, you know, show something similar to those lines. So the, there's another JavaScript library called Scrollit um, that's operating in conjunction with this um, just to, to do this kind of navigation. Of course, you are free to put your own CSS into this stuff to get this stuff um, working uh, the way you like. But uh, yeah, you could also put this block up the top of the page as well and ha have a more familiar sort of menu bar kind of uh, thing working as well. So yeah, that's, that's basically another little tool you can do there to, to build out single page websites if you so desire. And uh, that particular module, it's still uh, in the sandbox. Uh, Radium's working on that, but um, yeah, that one's working pretty well at the moment. Okay, bringing it all together, let's uh, let's have a look at this kind of stuff and uh, and just a couple of the demo pages that we've done, just to give you guys an idea of some of the stories you're able to tell uh, with this toolkit. So here we are on the demos page. Uh, this is a sort of a demo page put together by Chloe. Um, just once again, it's got the carousel uh, there, the edgy design with uh, with basically the, the grids in the WYSIWYG and um, you know, just a few other sort of content paragraphs here. It's a fairly simple kind of um, approach, but you know, this really tells, you know, I think a nice story in, in a pleasant way. You can see this, this content is actually like chunked out content. And if anyone went to Jeff Eaton's talk today, you probably would have heard Jeff talking about the narrative and the body field and the narrative that exists inside it. In, and I, I do agree with him. Um, paragraphs do kind of break up that narrative a little bit. But if, if your content is kind of chunkable in this kind of way, it certainly is you know, a good way to tell um, that particular story. Uh, we'll just have a look at another demo we've done. This one's been put together by Peter. Peter actually went away and did all the cooking, the photography, and uh, put this sort of page together. So he went above and beyond um, for this one. So yeah, we can see uh, you know backgrounds, edgy sort of background stuff there. Um, got a little bit of parallax thing there. I laughed the first time I saw that. I thought that was that was quite sweet. Oh, these interfaces, they're, they're just delighting me. Um, we got, uh, yeah, so just, just another sort of content one here. 
a little bit of kind of scroller action there, the, like the before and afters. That might be, you know, I'm, it's not really showing on the screen terribly well, but uh, yeah, that's that's quite a sweet effect. And, uh, you know, just a little bit more stuff and a parallax with a like a negative image on there. So, you know, I was really surprised when I saw that. I thought, yeah, that's a pretty cool page, you know. And, um, you know, that was put together just by, you know, coming up with a few ideas, an editor that knew what they were doing and uh, just putting it on. So, you know, there was no themer involved in, in building this page. You know, the site builder and themer had done the work up front and then the editor just comes along and, and drops this stuff uh, into, the, into the page. And have a look at the last one. This is just a little bit going over the top, but just showing some, some crazy sort of scroller effects that you can do. Just uh, mucking around with alpha channels, um, doing sort of some rudimentary animation there. He eats all our precious blocks, just doing a bit of sort of um, text sizes there and stuff. You know, so you can play around with that stuff as, as you like. So, you know, you probably don't want to go overboard on that, but, yeah, it's just some of the, the possibilities you've got there. So, yeah, just before I move on from that slide, I'd really like to emphasize that what we're giving editors here is the ability to tell stories. That's, that's primarily what I wanted to do when we were, you know, setting out with this stuff. Like, I, I really wanted content creators, you know, artists, marketers, these kinds of people to be able to get a Drupal page and just do some cool stuff with it, putting up, you know, images and graphics and, you know, really trying to tell a rich story to communicate to, the, uh, to their audience. All right, time for a few reflections. I've still got, still got a, a bit of time to talk about this kind of stuff. Ah, oh, okay, how can I best tell the story? Well, I just spoke about that. But um, I think when, when we started out on this journey, we were really trying to solve some technical problems on how to achieve you know, some layouts for various clients. And you know, what we've ended up with is you know, a bunch of modules that are working together really nicely to, um, to you know, allow editors uh, to tell their story, to give them more freedom and more creativity. So I, I think, you know, Drupal is great at uh, sort of data modeling with, uh, you know, fields and entities. But a lot of the time, you know, that's, that data model is defined by an information architect or the, the site builder. What we're trying to do here with paragraphs is to give editors a few tools for them to sort of break out of that, those um, confines and to basically put stuff on the page as they like, where they like, and hopefully do that in an interesting way. Now, of course, I do sound like a Paragraphs fanboy. I think I'm kind of known for it wherever I go. People say, oh, yeah, Paragraphs, that's all they want to talk to, <laughs> to me about. But there are some downsides, and it is worth mentioning them. Um, this presentation that you're seeing today is actually all done as a single page website in Drupal with paragraphs. Um, I kind of wanted to do the presentation this way just to basically push the envelope and see how far I could take it. I, th I think the, the outcome has been, is good, you know, it looks good on screen. However, I think it's fair to say that I did run into a few issues with dealing with paragraphs and I'll, I'll just go through a couple of those. Firstly, the node edit performance can suffer when you have a lot of paragraphs on a page. So for example, this particular presentation has 30 paragraphs. Every time you add a new paragraph, Drupal will basically do an Ajax call off into Drupal and that form will be built out again. These forms are very complex things and it takes a lot of CPU to, to build that form and then to send it back to Drupal. So basically your server is getting hammered at least as far as I can see, when these big forms are being sent back. And I, I think I've seen people, you know, in issue queues with field collection have similar problems. And I, I think it's, it's something that, uh, you know, paragraphs will run into as well. So I think if you're dealing with, you know, five, six, seven paragraphs on a page, it's not really going to hurt you. But if you are dealing with a large number, then, you know, it's probably not the best thing in the world. Secondly, when that big chunk of data comes back, I think the client gets hammered as well. I'm, I'm not sure if it was just, you know, the amount of memory or the, the DOM being manipulated or, or maybe it was all the, the CK editors on the page. But basically, yeah, Drupal has, the, the client has a bit of a tough time rendering out these massive forms as well. Um, also, 
in terms of the editing experience, you can see when I've been building these um, sort of paragraph bundles out, I've been using the field group just to group them and make them a little bit more compact. If you don't use that kind of approach, you will get kind of, you know, quite big forms going down the page that can be difficult to understand where you are or difficult to drag around. So that's a little concession I've had to make to try to get that user interface looking um, sort of nicer. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's working quite well. You can still sort of see nicely where you are and, and move those things around. There is no preview when you're doing this stuff. There's no sort of graphical sort of concept of what you're doing when you're dropping this stuff on the page. So I think, you know, um, that panels in place editor has a much better experience in uh, sort of that kind of realm. And finally, I do want to say panels is much more powerful. I think a lot of the stuff we're doing here is um, we're kind of taking paragraphs and trying to trick it up to do some cool stuff, and we have. But if you go into the panels world, you have an insanely, you know, much larger amount of sort of flexibility and power uh, available to you. Now, the, pa the panels world, I think that's great, you know, for site builders. At least that's the way um, I see it. And I think if I was going to build this presentation again, I probably would do it as just one massive panels page because, you know, I'm a site builder and I can understand that kind of stuff. Nonetheless, I think that Paragraphs really does, you know, have a very important place for giving editors that flexibility and that power. So I would, I would just argue that, uh, you know, different, different audiences, different approaches. And I think that the Paragraphs approach is still worthwhile. But if you want some super powerful interface, then, you know, the, the panels world uh, would still be preferable. Um, Jeff Eaton gave a really, really good um, presentation this morning, and uh, hopefully you guys uh, caught it. It's, it's definitely in the, uh, the same realm as, as uh, what I've been talking about today. Um, Jeff's been talking about this thing, this kind of stuff for a number of years. You may be aware of, like, the blobs versus chunks uh, sort of conversations that, that have been going on. Um, and Jeff made a, a few remarks about paragraphs, saying that, uh, you know, they can be good in certain uh, use cases, but not so great where you want to have that narrative going down the body field. And, you know, I do agree with him with that. Um, but I, I think that, uh, yeah, paragraphs do perform really well when you're wanting to add either chunks of information or maybe just, you know, adding stuff to the bottom of the, the body field, such as, you know, a query or a gallery or, or something like that, as, as we've seen. So, yeah, I think Paragraphs does still have a role to play uh, in this world. What I've shown you today has been largely presentational. It, it's really been uh, sort of a presentation where I haven't really sort of spoken about fields or sort of semantic stuff so much. And I don't want you to think that I'm kind of dissing um, sort of traditional data modeling with Drupal. That's why I came to Drupal with CCK and of course I love sort of fields and that structure that you can build. So as site builders and information architects, of course I encourage you to still model your data as best you can, but just think about using paragraphs to augment that um, structure so that you give some power back to the editors. So you can kind of see it as a little bit of a power struggle. You know, you have you know, site builders defining structure, but the editors want to do sort of crazy things. This is a way to allow editors to do those crazy things. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the point here, content creators have the freedom to augment the structures of the information architect. And I think that's a, a really important point, and it does give the, uh, the client often the power that they're looking for. Also with uh, distributions, you know, these are, are famous for crystallizing, um, you know, data structures in features. And if you try to, you know, change anything, you're going to be getting overrides. Introducing paragraphs into that kind of world is a way to really, you know, sort of free up that distro to do some cool things in a pluggable way, but without breaking that sort of underlying structure that, that you've got going on there. What we've seen today is, is also a combination of approaches. So... I've shown you paragraphs, but you've also seen some tricked out WYSIWYG fields where we've had the grids. Um, we've also had some little counters and some, you know, some other special effects. That was, yeah, basically stuff going on in the, uh, in the WYSIWYG. So it's not just paragraphs that's doing this stuff. It's, it's just sort of, you know, the CK editor with different sort of plugins doing some cool stuff as well. I would also like to um, 
mention atoms and, and scald. I, I don't really have that much experience or zero experience with it, but I can see that um, allowing people to embed entities into the WYSIWYG with something like scold is going to be you know a pattern that is going to be very powerful in the future and I really see kind of paragraphs and scold sort of sitting uh, you know in diff pretty much the same thing fieldable entities with structure one's living in the WYSIWYG one's living outside the WYSIWYG you know so I can see these two ideas working in in conjunction uh, a lot in the future. All right. Well, that's um, that's pretty much the the end of it. Before I finish up, though, I would say um, that this presentation uh, is available on the web. It is a Drupal website made with paragraphs, um, and I would also encourage you, you know, after the presentation today, just to to check out the the session um, and and rate it and and just leave some comments and um, some feedback for me. That'd be really much appreciated. And finally, there is a boff on this stuff um, on Thursday. So if you guys want to uh, you know, come along and chat about it and talk about the possibilities and maybe find out a little bit more about what's going on in the back end or if you've got a few suggestions, you know, I'd love to, to see you there. And yeah, this is a, a YouTube video background that's um, been implemented on, on uh, Paragraph. Okay, everyone, thank you very much. So uh, this sexy little counter you can see, when I was building this page out a month or so, it's been counting down all that time. So <laughs> it's really been stressing me out, actually. I've, I've, I've only got 12 minutes to go, and you've got 12 minutes to uh, ask some questions. So please uh, step up to the mic there if you'd like to, to ask any questions. Um, uh, I, had, I had a comment more than a question, but just like in the... Uh, most recent version of paragraphs, I know it lets you actually collapse the paragraph items, which I think will solve some of the problems that you were trying to solve with the the sections within it. Um, and it actually it gives you a view mode that you can define for what the item will look like when it's collapsed, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I knew that was sort of going on, but yeah, I didn't know that that had actually landed. Cheers. Two questions. One was about uh, uh, load time. Do you guys do anything with lazy loading or uh, kind of dynamic loading with any of the content? No, ba basically that stuff is um, yeah, it's just built you know okay. uh, in yeah on the server and, and served out. So I mean, you probably could add lazy loading for the images if you liked, but yeah, we haven't done anything with the paragraphs. Uh, one of the ideas I've kind of been flirting with is is having a lazy loaded paragraph that does work off state that is stored in the client, you know. So I have been trying to think of ways to do personalization or something like that based on sort of uh, cookie information or something like that. I've kind of been thinking about it, but I, I haven't really come up with a, you know, a way to do, do that. But I, th I think that could really, yeah, open up a lot of uh, possibilities. Got it. And then the other question is about mobile. Is, uh, how does this stuff react on different size screens? Yeah, so all of the stuff you see in here, you know, is responsive. Um, you know, it, it does work on, on mobile stuff. But that's that's really comes down to totally the, the theming layer and how you've implemented your grids and your, your theme. So, you know, if you've got that stuff sorted with your theme and your view modes, then you're sweet. Um, but, yeah, it doesn't really come into the, the paragraph stuff itself. Right, thank you. Cool. Hi there. Hi. I have a question about the edit interface for paragraphs. I spent a lot of time about a year ago experimenting with paragraphs, got it all set up, and I ran into some of the same exact stuff that you described in terms of the drawbacks. And one of the main ones was that once you started adding some number of paragraphs, the, the edit form page is like, you know, so tall for scrolling purposes. And when you want to add more paragraphs very often, I mean, depending on how you've got nesting set up or whatnot, maybe they're showing up where you want them to, maybe they're not. You've got the drag and drop interface, and that gets kind of squirrely. So I'm curious to know if you've worked on any solutions with that, been experimenting. You know, you see stuff out there like 
Squarespace or whatever, you can just hover over something and click, and it goes exactly where you want to. And I thought, well, what if you could do something like that with paragraphs, and a, a little menu pops up, and it's the paragraph that you want to add. Or I don't know. There's all kinds of things that one could do. So have you spent any time working on anything like that? Uh, no, we, we haven't. So, I mean, as you've seen, we, we try to do the, the field group thing just to keep it compact. And a, a former question uh, there m did mention that it's now possible to collapse paragraphs and to, to have a, to have a, a view mode um, showing a preview. So, I mean, yeah, work has obviously been done to, uh, yeah, to help out with that. But I do agree, yeah, if you've got a, a page with 30 paragraphs on it, it is unwieldy and it's difficult, right? So... You know, I, th I think so long as the content editors are not going too crazy with it, it will, you know, remain – you can handle it. But, yeah, you don't want to push it too far, I don't think. Right. Good work on all the sub-modules, man. Looking great, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. Hey there. How would you do, uh, like, APIs and things with paragraphs? Would you just put it out as a separate uh, item or uh, somehow attach it to the body field? Or Have you, have you come across that? How how are paragraphs yeah, does embedded? It, uh, can it act like as the body field for uh, like RESTful API output or something like that, so, or even on an XML feed? Uh, wait, I haven't I haven't looked at any of that, but you know, ob obviously it's an entity. You know, it's it's on a on a field, so there there is that kind of nested data structure there that you would have to traverse down if you're going to output that stuff. So okay, so you um, just have to handle it kind of as a separate field from body. Yes, that's right. Yeah, you got your body field again. This is like a, a separate sort of field. So, okay. Um, okay. yeah. Thanks. Cool, mate. Hi. I uh, just really appreciate this uh, module. We actually just developed something very similar to this. We didn't find this contrib module before we developed this, so this is very exciting. Um, interested to know if you've in integrated entity queue or node queue into this. Well, I mean, interestingly enough, I don't think you – we didn't really feel the need for that because if, if you're using entity reference, you know, on unlimited, you can basically drag those up and down. So that, that is, in effect, kind of queuing stuff in a, in a, in a way. Um, the, the thing with paragraphs, though, is it, it is attached to the node, like the state that you – it's like content that belongs to that node. It's not really content that's reusable across different um, nodes. I mean, you could, you could probably implement – and we have done this, you know, pulling in beans and stuff like that. But it's, it really is belongs to the node. So you're not really getting that reuse. A node queue, of course, you could reuse across the site. But, yeah, I, I, if I was doing it, I would just be hard baking it in as an entity reference unlimited on the, the paragraph. Yeah, our use case was if we wanted to have one list that we wanted to reuse and be maintained from one area. That's where that benefit would come, but yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's right. And you know, for for some of those things, we could go, oh, let's go away and implement that. And then you go, oh man, this this is just, I'm just re-implementing like panels or something like that. And you just you kind of you kind of got a raise a red flag at that that kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, if if you really wanted to do that, of course you could kind of build that if you wanted to. Yeah. Hi there. Thank you for the presentation. Um, just a uh, one comment be, uh, because. Uh, colleagues of mine, they uh, they did a similar approach. Uh, like it works, like uh, you would expect from the paragraph thing, but they build it w with just uh, the really most used uh, or a lot of most used uh, Drupal modules, like entity reference and uh, and view modes and cus uh, and custom entities, and uh, they achieve the, the 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 same functionality. And the nice thing about it, you know, it's not better or anything, but it's nice thing, nice, uh, thing about it is it's almost uh, Drupal 8 ready because uh, those entity reference and uh, view modes and entities uh, come all on board with uh, Drupal. And they just had some uh, tiny modules to show the, the, the view mode selection on the, on the entity reference field. They call the thing uh, fancy, and there's a fancy kickstart uh, distribution if you want to try it out on uh, Simply Test Me or so. Um, it's it's kind of nice, and it opens up for more, you know, uh, builder experience to uh, to that, you know, uh, because it's just plugging together some modules, and so you have more possibilities if you want to do some custom stuff there. Okay, so that yeah, that was the fancy distribution. Yeah. Fancy Kickstarter is fancy the kickstart. distribution and there's the 
fancy something, but you know, you'll find it on Drupal.org. Yeah, I, but I, I don't really think that's a, an issue for paragraphs. It, it's an entity with fields. I, I, that should upgrade pretty well. You know, the paragraphs module is being prepared for Drupal 8, so I don't think you should have too many troubles there, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering um, if you have any experience or uh, with using uh, views, like is, is there is it pretty straightforward that you can like say filter based on a field that's on a paragraph? I could imagine that being a challenge. Yeah, well, so that that was that views filter object module that I was I was showing you. That's kind of the way we've we've tied it in. No, with I mean that. I'm the other way around. Say that you wanted to create a view that was um, filtering nodes that based on a node that had a paragraph with a certain field value. Yeah, right. I've I've never actually done that, and I would say yeah, this is a weaker, it's much weaker data model. Obviously, you want to have the field on the node. That's kind of much more reliable than than right. searching through a list of paragraphs looking for a certain bundle and then trying to yeah. get get that value out. So yeah, if you if you want okay. to do queries like that, it's probably not so great. There's a guy over here who says you can do it. You. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure you, you can do it, but it's... Mm -hmm. And, and it, uh, I, I was just imagining that since each of the paragraphs are different entities, essentially, uh, that it might be complicated to get the SQL to, to match up correctly. But I guess someone figured it out, so that's cool. <laughs> cool. All right. Anyone else? Three minutes. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. So, so Mike Morris came over to Sydney, and we we had a chat to him. Oh, yeah. We had a we, yeah, we had a beer with him. I've been out and had a, had a bar, had a barbecue with a few of the other Phase Two guys. That was about a year ago. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We never did any work for you, but we're kind of talking to Mike about it a little bit. But uh, yeah, never did. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely come by and have a chat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. I don't. could kind of rebuild that, that functionality by having an entity reference and then using that inline then kind of form. Have you seen that module at the commerce module at somewhere like this? But you can actually create an entity in line. Okay, yeah. But that sounds like what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, like that's not really existing to it. I, okay, man. All right. Look at this, man. I've got to wait for my 10 seconds. Yeah. Right. Give me my 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this baby go to zero. I'll just, I'll just stand here like <laughs> okay. that. Okay. Awkwardly enough. <laughs> Just need the OG Jackson. That's it.
Okay, that's all right, mate. I didn't expect that either. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just unplug. Yeah, there we go, man. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm back.